the edge to this end of the table that Mr. Kennett is hitting the bottle in this. <laughs> <laughs> and of stoutly denied by me. All right, wing with the CIA characters. Yeah, well, anyway, I'll tell this untrue story, just to give you a bit tasteless for the new 90s privatised for sale, which is perfectly true. Well, this is interesting, because he told them, the manager of the gay hazard that the story was true. Of course it's true. Whoever thought it has got to be off them, off their children, it's bound to get derided. I mean, the capitalist press are going to go for it, for obvious reasons, and the left wing are going to go for it. I mean, Richard is a grotesque self obsessed I mean, he's like a page three girl. I mean, he would have gone on a coach to the Orkneys to take part in a radio phone in show. Bring in Eddie Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we have... Why don't if you bring somebody up and say, look, were you having a bonk with X or Y in the bike shed on Saturday night? I mean, what are they going to say? Well, yeah. say, yes, I was. It's perfectly all right to print the story. <laughs> I'm a, a revolutionary socialist, but I left, you know, because I thought there was a political job to be done and because I was quite sure there was going to be a revolution, which, unfortunately, there wasn't. <laughs> uh, is, uh, I don't think anybody... That, that, that is, that's who he is. Um, mm. The whole of my working life has been spent <laughs> laughing at the Tories. Um, I'd be interested to see what it would be like under Mr Kinnock. Quite funny, I would guess. I always viewed the function of private eye as analogous to a sort of weed killer. Get it? And um, that's a sort of fairly limited and negative role. But... Uh, I think in order to apply the weed killer, you have to know who the weeds are. Are you, are you in the Private Eye has sent an awful lot of material through the post anonymously. Uh, you have to develop a, a, some kind of sense about that material. Hello, Private Eye. I remember putting in the Parkinson story, the original Sarah Keyes story, which came in through the post. And I think I rang up Dempster and I said, well, what? I've got this thing, do, do you know anything? And he said, well, I've heard something like that. Uh, probably true, I think. And I just put it in. <laughs> she did actually take us to court fairly recently, so yes. I'm not... Yeah, but she didn't go to court, did she? No, no, no she, she left Charlie she Golding. Out. She, she bottled, bottled out, out at the last yeah. minute. We yeah. saw her off. We'll see. And we'll see her off again if she tries to get Hello. Home. Yeah, I'll have a quick word. Hello? Hi, how are you? Oh, wonderful. Right. OK. The original proofs of Ingham's book have sadly fallen into our hands, yeah, very good. Well, including the full cuts. Yes, isn't that a tragedy? Mr. Ingham, how very good. good. Information flows in there. Some people would say it flows like a sewer. I say it flows like a river. Because the thing that matters most of all about the world we live in is that we can't get any information. Yeah. The point about private eye that I think needs to be stressed again and again is that it is the nearest thing we have in this country by a very long way to a free press. The eye became a sort of dustbin for Fleet Street in a way that hacks who had stories that they couldn't get in for one reason or another would pass them on to the eye. And you even find people who hate private eye. You know, we'll, you can see them absolutely hating private eye, but nevertheless, the urge to get something out is, is overcomes them with their, their hatred. It fed off Fleet Street in an odd way. Most of the jokes in private eye were sending up the way Fleet Street presented the news. Yet at the same time, uh, it was Fleet Street journalists who provided most of uh, the eyes' uh, information. So it was, I don't know how you'd describe that. Uh, this is just parasitic relationship, really. People often think from my name that I'm some sort of an alcoholic. I am. I love to drop in at my local. Sometimes I drop in on all fours. Sometimes I drop on my face. Three or four years ago, we had to take the giant step of using new technology. What we didn't want to, to lose was uh, the sort of cut-and-paste image or style that Private Eye had. So although we've got all the new technology, we don't follow it all the way through. Our 
art director lays it out on, on the page, as he always used to do. So we haven't lost that rather sort of tatty look. Its format has not really changed, has it? We have the bubble cover, we have the unreadable printing, we have the lavish design of the 60s. Um, it seems pointless to change it. Psychedelic baby, won't you take a trip with me? Dip your lump of sugar in the LSD. Marzipan term begins today. There are 862 boys in the school. The new headmaster is Mr. M.J.B. Barmitz for McGregor, M.A. Cantab, who replaces the late Mr. H.H. Rasputin Harrods. M.C.P. Bosengate, Dingwalls, is keeper of eggs. R.F.J. Motorway Madness, Marlis, is senior statesman. The Waddis will be rung at Dunkers on February 26th, Flannel Day. I actually went to Shrewsbury on the same day as Richard Ingram, so I've actually known him since 1950. Paul Foot was there. No, he came about a year later, I think and Chris Booker. So that's four of the starters, so to speak. And we were there together for five years, and at the end of that time, we had sort of risen up in the school to the point where we could take over the school magazine. Richard Ingrams ended up at Oxford with various friends, including Paul Foote, running a magazine there, or a couple of magazines. And uh, Rushton did cartoons for... Continued, page 94. When they all came down from university, I think it was I. But the more I talked to people, um, like Ingram and Booker, I realised that my role was insignificant and that theirs was rather larger. It was I who actually got them all together and said, why don't we just have a sort of year at trying to produce a magazine or something? Yeah. Could you please Hello. Brian Benai here. Booker was the editor and he went off, he got married, and as I remember, he went off on a very protracted holiday or sabbatical or whatever. And while he was away, Willie and I decided that we would sack him. So we wrote to him saying, don't come back, Booker. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, do get off it. Get on the <laughs> Major. Right. No. But no, it was you. That's a really boring place. Right. Secret diary of John Major. It was a funny atmosphere. It was always rather raffish, the office. Ingram's had the air of a prefect about him. Slightly slovenly dress, shaving cream on the lobes of his ears, pint of beer whenever possible. I, should, I think you should say he, they're all waiting for an important statement from him. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of fags around, too. There was Christopher Booker. And Barry Fantoni, who laughed, uh, I felt at the time, a little immoderately at anything Ingram said. <laughs> in my judgment... If it wasn't for the jokes in private eye, it would have closed down years ago. There are merits to both cases. There are merits to both cases. I cannot decide. <laughs> the same people have been doing that basically since 1963. There is a slight atmosphere, well, right, with people sitting down saying, right, who are we going to attack now? Let's attack... <laughs> Mr. Prosser, what's he been doing? Is it just because he comes from Wales? It's very easy to get pompous about satire, um, particularly when you open the pages and find you've done a load of fairly cheap jokes about someone or other. Uh, but I think that's probably true of the people who are now taken very seriously and put in the history books. Right, Paul, gather. gather. It was quite funny when he went down. <laughs> <laughs> Crucial to this story. And the irony is, it's, it's, a, it's the same ligaments that put Claffy out of the game in '62, 28 62. years ago. There's the only joint that goes one way. If he was a darts player, there's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably go into darts. He's got the figure for it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, with his keyhole surgery. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, it's I do it's keyhole surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to amazing things they give a new knee. <laughs>